Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020. Orbix recently released their South America mesh and I'm going to try it out but before I do we are going to take a look at the default South America mesh. I recall from my flight with the Boeing 247 in southern Chile that it didn't look particularly good. It had all sorts of spikes and everything. So South America has been a place that needs a lot of work so uh, I would like any improvements that we can get and the mesh is only $13. It's purporting to cover all of South America basically for with about 20 gigabytes. That seems like a tall order, but we'll see. Uh, I am here in the SC Designs F-16. I was originally going to do a F-16 video all on its own, but uh, they had updated it to 0 0.6.0 with an improvement to the fly-by-wire system, the fuel system, and they released that two days ago. But then they updated it again today and it is now 0.7.0. It's not yet 1.0 yet, so it's not technically fully done as far as they're concerned, which is good. I like that they're still working on it. And so we'll see how it is in 0.7.0. I already tried the fly-by-wire system improvement and the fuel system improvement, and we will need the fuel probably. So I'm going to put all the fuel in, and what had happened was a sim update had uh, removed the way that they had done the conformal tanks and the external tanks, but now it's working properly again uh, since the 0 0.6.0 update. The 0 0.7.0 update had some HUD improvements. Uh, they had reshaped the HUD. I did note that it had been excessively angled before, so it's looking a little bit better. If I would, if I can venture to give a suggestion, the artificial horizon is a little bit edgy. Uh, same as uh, same with the one up there, the backup one. Uh, they, there's not enough polygons on, unless that's actually how it is for the F-16. I somehow doubt that. But we need some more polygons on that thing. If you could do that for point uh, eight, 0.8.0, that'd be wonderful. Uh, otherwise, it's a very good-looking cockpit and everything. And uh, they have actually improved the afterburner effect using the stock one. And I really like this afterburn effect compared to some of the other fighters that we have. So, yeah. We are in Southern Chile again. We're basically covering the same ground that I did with the Boeing 247, just faster. As we go north, I think we'll get a better view of the landscape and everything. Actually, in this southern area, it wasn't too bad, but we'll get a glimpse here. Interesting, it's called a waypoint zero. The map doesn't seem to be working right, does it? Hold on, let me see if I can use my backup map. I don't know what's happened to the VFR map. Yet. Okay, so we are here. Tierra del Fuego, of course. And here the landscape was not too bad, but you can see it's, it's still limited in its quality. So we'll get a good reference for comparison here. But yeah, previously I had to turn off the fly-by-wire system at really high speeds, say past Mach 1.5, because it got wobbly. But uh, in the recent test that I previously done for the 0 0.6.0 version, uh, I found that the fly-by-wire system was working just fine at high velocities, at least for the test period that I did. So it seems to have worked out. But we are primarily interested in the landscape. This is how it looks here. Still around Tierra de Fuego, headed for Punta Arenas. For the Orbix scenery, the quality they specified was that they had 10 meter data for the Andes and then 20 meter data for the rest. That is uh, a pixel point for every 10 meters for the Andes, and then a pixel point for every 20 meters for the rest of the mesh. So we're taking a good look at this. The textures are another issue, of course. The mesh is not going to affect that, but you know, if you have very detailed mesh, sometimes that can save the situation even if like the snow is very plain. I do have this custom livery for the SC Designs F-16. I found it easy to make a livery for it. 
Uh, I also have one for the India Fox Teco F35. So, my little Ray Zero Space liveries. Some planes it's easy to make a livery for, some planes a little bit harder. It depends on what the files look like. So, the Puente Arenas area, where we actually started out last time with the Boeing 247. In this area, the Puerto Arenas area, the stock landscape seems especially good, actually. You can see some subtleties in it. Okay, we are turning at our first waypoint and you can see the default landscape here. Not as detailed anymore as it was in the near vicinity of Punta Arenas. At least it seems that way. Okay, so we'll get in lower to see what's going on. Again, the textures aren't going to get helped by this. Which is sad, but that's how it is. Yeah, I mean, obviously this is not the most inspiring landscape right now. Looks like something from ages ago. I haven't seen any of the spikes yet though. Well, the trees help. Trees always help. I haven't seen any spikes. Oh, there's a spike. Let's visit the spike over there. <laughs> oh, we should get a bearing on the spike so that we can check it out later. Overall, around here it isn't quite as bad as my memory made it out to be. But flying in a Boeing 247, you know, that's rather more up close than we're flying right now with the F-16, so every issue gets magnified. Okay, so right over here, outside of Puerto Natales to the west, we get these spikes. Trees all the way up this side of them. This is how this area looks. And yeah, rather spiky. Eventually, I imagine for these meshes, they'll be able to have some AI figure out the in-between stuff and fill in the data kind of thing. So yeah, rather plain. It's getting much worse out here. Though the textures over there don't look too bad. The cliff textures. Oh, there's a spike over there. Let's visit the spike. Again, just so that we can verify it disappears kind of thing. But I think we get the general sense of how the stock scenery is in these parts so that we can compare with the new scenery. I will take the risk and pay the price so you don't have to take a chance. You will know whether it's worth it or not. If you are prone to going flying in these locations. I fly everywhere, so I want everywhere to look good. This obviously doesn't look good. I mean, it looks interesting. It'll sure break the monotony, you know. Those mistakes aside, I mean, the landscape isn't tragic tragic, it's just obviously not up to the par with the rest of the sim. Textures are another issue, but I think at this point I'm satisfied. There's, I can see some spikes up ahead too. We know that there's gonna be mesh problems. So I'm gonna toss in the Orbix South America scenery, the South America mesh, and we will see how it looks by comparison. Okay, so now I have 25 gigabytes of Orbix South America mesh in and we're just going to fly basically the same route that we did before and see what it looks like. 
and here we go. Now in the distance we can see some of the mountains there. The one closest to us on the right doesn't seem particularly spectacular, but the one behind it seems much better, I think. Again, I, I don't have a side-by-side -side comparison available to me, but my vague memory of how it looked in the previous flight does suggest that things have improved. Of course, we are certainly expecting that. The weather has improved, that might help. The BFR map still has not improved. <laughs> I don't know what's up, what, what happened to the BFR map suddenly. It's decided not to be working. To some extent, they can say, well, it's a 10 meter mesh, and this is part of the Andes in particular, so I assume it is a 10 meter part. It could be the 20, me 20 meter part, but um, though I seem to recall the LOD steps going from 30 to 10, but anyway. Um, but it's all dependent on the quality of the raw data. So you can try and put, you know, a pixel every 10 meters, but if that pixel isn't different from the one next to it because the raw data isn't up to that level then what are you gonna do? We can see sort of uh, minor sort of indentations there. It's not as smooth as it used to be. I guess I'll push it past the sound barrier just so we don't get the, the effect there but I think we are getting sharper ridges, like on these mountains that we are passing right now, the, the sort of ridge is much more sharply defined. It's not all rounded like it was before. These are looking pretty good. Oh, a brief loss of connection there, very brief. Okay, so we'll continue on to Puerto Arenas, and then we saw those weird peaks around Puerto Natales, so we'll see how that area looks this time. Will we get weird spikes? I sure hope not. I mean, if there's one thing we are expecting, it is an absence of weird spikes. Actually, uh, I mean, this is looking pretty good so far. I mean, you can't expect an immense amount. Ultimately it is 25 gigabytes worth of data for all of South America. And of course some of the details are down to the photo scenery, which is what it is. That is not being replaced, so... Though, I guess the mesh can bring out the sort of rationale for the photo scenery sometimes. Uh, you can sort of see sort of snow on one side of those peaks, but uh, trees and foliage on the opposite side. Yeah, I don't think these were looking quite as good as they do right now. Well, at least from a high vantage point we'd be able to see if there were any anomalies. They, there aren't so far. Well, there are certain subtleties in the mesh here. Like, you can see where creeks sort of are. And actually, those details aren't necessarily in the photo scenery, or at least they're covered by trees, but you can see little riverways based on the mesh. Oh, that's a nice little place right there. I mean, not relevant to our mesh 
exploration, but that's, that's a really nice place right there. That little town's got to be rather proud of their location. I mean, look at it. That's, uh, that's really something. Must be there for a reason, I mean. Oh, it occurs to me I forgot to put the conformal tanks this time. So we're actually short of fuel compared to last time. I'll have to watch out for that. It always takes away my fuel beforehand. Uh, so we're actually pretty low on fuel right now. Of course I can go to the menu and pump that up, but uh, we'll just take it slow. Uh, we're not... We're just going to imitate the flight from last time, so we'll get to uh, Puerto Natales. And we'll just take a look around up to that point where we have a reference for. Well, I'd say this region is looking pretty good too. Again, no anomalies to talk about. And I think this constitutes better detail for sure. Might not be fair to the stock scenery though to take a look at everything this high up, but I am looking for the odd spikes and such. And we should be getting into that sort of territory soon. Uh, over here I would say that the mesh, mesh isn't doing a whole heck of a lot, but maybe we are a little bit high up. The photo scenery though has the sort of weird blockiness going, so that doesn't help the impression a whole lot. This island over here to the right is interesting though. That seems rather detailed. I mean that... I don't remember seeing that before. It looks striking. Goes without saying, it's not like I've been here in real life so I don't know exactly what it's supposed to look like, but... Uh, these guys aren't the greatest right now over here. But here we're probably more worried about weird anomalies and we're not seeing anything completely unnatural going on here. Let's face it, the stock game set the bar rather low for the scenery around here. There's definitely an improvement over that. There's a mound over there to the left, and there's some mountains over to the right-ish. Let me check out the mound to see whether that's an uh, anomaly or not. Well, no, it looks like a proper mountain. Nothing too weird about that one. Just take a look over to the right then. Well really with the basics fixed, a lot of what needs to happen next is just photo scenery which is going to be tough. These are obviously generic textures around here. And I don't know if there is any chance of getting better photo scenery for South America. Let's face it, South America, Africa, and a whole lot of Asia could do with a lot more love. Let me see if I can get to that mountain over there. Would have to go through a whole lot of other South America. We've only touched the tip of the iceberg, if you will. The southern tip of the iceberg, as far as what we've got here. But this particular location is certainly an interesting place to fly. Another place that we should probably take a look at later is uh, around Ma Machu Picchu and Peru and those and Cusco and that those sorts of areas very famous and historical and obviously elevated <laughs> important important aspect to that okay well the mountain I was heading to doesn't look particularly spectacular but we'll take a closer look Okay, so there was this mountain that we were headed to. The sort of generic textures that they have around it are nice. 
it's the sort of the cliffy textures that they throw around sometimes. I, I like them especially, they're very nice. Um, I think those are generic, but boy, uh, they might be the real photo scenery. I've just seen them in so many places though, but they really look good, so maybe they're real. Um, this guy looks legit. I don't think we saw anything like this previously. Could it be better? Of course it could be better. There's a lot that could be better. But there's no weirdness around here. Maybe that makes it less entertaining, but uh, there, there's some satisfaction to coming to this area and seeing things looking proper. I want to fly all over the place. I'm, I'm not, not sticking around to familiar locations. That's for sure. And I expect it to all look good. Well, here we are. That, that has been a very, very, very minor portion of the South America mesh from Orbix, and I'm fairly satisfied with this test of the thing. And in fact, probably what I'm going to do is continue that Boeing 247 flight up uh, through Chile. I uh, so did one flight, but we could continue with that. So alright, with this little review of uh, the mesh as well as the SC Designs F-16, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.